Hey, y'all, I'm back like Moses to bring the law in the words of Mason Betha. Hi, y'all, I'm back. It's your girl, Taria, from What Else Is Going On podcast, aka We Go podcast over here on YouTube. Thank you so much for taking the time out to watch the video, comment, subscribe, share it, give your feedback, all of that. I do not take all of that for granted. It's been a wild seven, eight days um, just watching my subscriber count grow and just people coming over and commenting and getting to connect with y'all. I love doing that. I love talking to y'all, whether it's through here or uh, in comments on Instagram and DMs. I, I just love having conversation with y'all. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am truly excited um, about all of this activity going on. So I'm back to talk to y'all about some things. So I told y'all in my video that I just uploaded a little while ago that there was more things that I wanted to talk to y'all about. So let's go ahead and get into them. First up, I came across this story. You know how you be scrolling and come across stories or either, I don't, I can't remember if it was through an email and I'm subscribed to something and this story came up or if I was scrolling Instagram, I can't even remember. But I will say when I saw the heading, I was like, what? So I had to read it and I was like, oh, I have to let y'all know this. So um, whatever I was reading led me over to TMZ child. So woman search for missing husband. I'm filing for divorce ASAP, two exclamation marks. Thanks internet for tracking him down. Ashley McGuire's the woman who went viral by asking internet sleuths to locate her missing husband. And now that she's found him, She's ending her marriage, TMZ has learned. Ashley tells TMZ she received a text from her estranged husband, Charles, after her Facebook plea blew up online. She says Charles, who also goes by Charlie, said he is willing to sit down and talk after allegedly walking out on her and her kids last year. I want to read y'all the post that she put, on, put up on Facebook. I'm really about to test the power of Facebook with this one. This is my husband, Charles, and... The last name was visible, but TMZ has blurted out. He loves to be the center of attention, but I'm not sure how much he's going to like this with the emoji light. Last year, when I was pregnant with our youngest baby, he decided being a husband and a dad wasn't the lifestyle he wanted anymore. And he ghosted like gone without a trace. He has one baby he hasn't seen in over a year and one he's never met. He's moved somewhere out of state and changed his phone number. Divorcing someone who's completely unreachable is really tough and drawn out. So I'm trying to track him down to get his signature on a few pieces of paper so I can finally close this chapter and move on with my life. I've heard he's going by chart. I've heard he's going by Charlie now. He's British and charming AF. He's a chef and probably working in the hospitality industry somewhere. He's probably never mentioned having a wife or kids back in Massachusetts. If you know him, if you're working with him, if you're dating him or friends with him, can you please get in? Can you please have him get in touch with me or let me know where I can find him? The emoji with the upside down face. All the all the girls, girls out there, feel free to share. And then fingers crossed emoji. A friend of a friend is a. A friend of a friend of a friend has got to know where he is with that emoji. Then she posted, so she posted that. And then it would look, it looks like, I will say six hours after that, but I'm not sure because on her post, it says like 15 hours ago that on this next one, it says 21 hours ago, but update guys, this is absolutely insane. I figured maybe someone in my area was still in touch with him, but I absolutely did not expect this. I've gotten more in caps than enough information to locate him. I have literally hundreds of messages to sort through, some with information and some with support, as I appreciate all of them. Single moms are a special breed, and I know a lot of you have gone through the same situation I have. Please know I truly do not wish him any type of ill will. I sincerely appreciate all of your support, but please do not make threats, spread hate, or try to go out and locate him. Truly, I only want to see this situation resolved so me and my children can restart our lives and fix the damage done. At the end of the day, the day got to end. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she didn't say that part, but was it Sukiyana that said that on Jason Lee's podcast or do I have that all wrong? Anyway, 
at the end of the day, I get to come home to my babies and be their mom. So I think I win regardless. Also, that karaoke video that everyone's sending, I don't think that's actually him. So I apologize to whoever it is for your karaoke being blasted all over the internet. You did a great job though with the laughing emoji. Thank you again to everyone with the heart. So those were her two posts. Then Ashley has since taken down her viral Facebook post explaining she no longer needs it up since she has Charles's new address courtesy of an online follower who tracked it down for her. And with this new address, which is in Texas, by the way, mind you, he was in Massachusetts with her. They had a baby. She was pregnant with their second child. They were married and he decided he didn't want to be a father or a husband up and left. And his new address is in Texas. Ashley says she can file for divorce, which she plans to do as soon as possible. She tells us she'll be seeking full custody of their children. Ultimately, Ashley is moved by the outpouring of support she received these last few days. She adds, I'm not the only person in this situation. There are many women that are trying to hold it down and find their missing spouse. Still, she had no idea her post would have a global audience as she simply expected someone from her town in Massachusetts to see it and help her out. Instead, thousands of people tuned into Ashley's journey, offering up advice and tips as she searched for her ex. And as TMZ previously reported, in less than 24 hours, Ashley had enough information to track down Charles. As they say, hell hath no fury like internet sleuths with time on their hands. I thought that was interesting. I want to see if I could show you all this. Bear with me. Y'all Y'all know me and technology. I want y'all to see, y'all see this? This is one of the pictures. Look, how lovingly, look at this one. Y'all see that? You just never know. I'm glad that she was able to do that. He just gave no thought, like for you to, a coward, for you to just leave, not tell her where you were going, Knowing you were married, he's the type of man that probably would have met somebody else if he hasn't already, fell in love and remarried them as if he wasn't already married, knowing that their marriage wouldn't be legal. I am so, so glad she did her post and found him and can move on. When she said he's willing to sit down, I hope because, you know, she's getting attention from this. Who knows what kind of deals and things she may get uh, from this and um. I hope that the sit down is truly for him to sign papers and be done and not try to weasel his way back. Ashley, don't fall for it. Don't do it if he does. I need to make sure I stay, follow this story. So make sure we see this divorce through. But anyway, ain't that crazy? y'all? Like that is so wild to me. Like you just decide, you don't even have the balls to just to say, I want to be done. You ghost your wife and your child. It's an embarrassment. He is an embarrassment, but yes, but I just wanted to share that with y'all. The internet did its thing. I was like, I know anytime I need something done, I'm coming straight to the internet. They're the best, seriously. All right, moving on. Let's talk about Jeezy and Jenny Mai. According to page six, Jeezy seeks primary custody of two-year-old daughter, Monaco, amid Jenny Mai divorce. Jeezy is seeking primary custody of the two-year-old daughter he shares with Jeannie Mai amid their contentious divorce, according to court documents obtained by page six. Side note, they're calling it contentious, but I kind of feel like it's because he's making it contentious. What do y'all think? Anyway, contentious nonetheless. According to court documents obtained by page six, the put on rapper filed in a Fulton County court Wednesday to vacate their current mediated agreement on temporary issues between him and the former real co-host regarding their child custody and parenting time. Jeezy, Jay Jenkins, claims he and Mai agreed on a custody arrangement for Monaco back in February. However, he now wants his daughter to live with him full-time because of her mom's hectic schedule. Mm. In the docs, the sole survivor MC46 claims he agreed to move into the basement of their shared home, but Mai has since moved out of the residence and took Monica with her. Child, wait, what? Okay, so they were in their joint home. He was going to move in the basement to be there, but she moved out and took the baby. Since then, Jeezy alleges that Mai's brother and mom are taking primary care of Monaco and the Raid the Cage co-host 
hectic schedule isn't good for the young child. The Lord, how many times? The adversity for sale, you got to believe, author, call him Jeezy at this point, also claims that my 45 has allegedly refused to honor their custody agreement by not giving him his parenting time for the last two months. Jeezy believes Monica, who was born, Monaco, who was born January 2022, would have more stability in her life under his primary care. TMZ was the first to report this news. The four the four time Grammy nominee's newest filing comes more than four months after he accused Mai of gatekeeping their daughter from him. Jeezy claimed in that motion obtained by page six last November that the lack of consistency, um, continuity, and stability inherently associated with such a haphazard and fluid parenting time schedule is becoming stressful stressful for Monaco. Mai denied the allegations and claimed that she wanted to foster an open, supportive, and safe environment for both parents to actively participate in Monaco's life, which includes Jeezy making sure all of his firearms are properly stored. I remember that when she tried to say that his firearms weren't stored. And I remember at that time thinking, so is that something new? Because you lived in this house with him the whole time. So that's an issue now. That was just one of the first thoughts that I had. So this divorce is definitely getting contentious. Now it's the custody thing. I just, I mean, I will say this. I would have never expected for it to end up like, uh, for it to end up like this between the two of them. Boy, I tell you though, you know, divorce and things bring out a side of an, of a person that either a, you haven't seen or be ignored because you want it to be married to them so bad. We'll see what happens. Next up, I want to talk about cheer. Do y'all remember the show cheer? When I tell y'all I was team Navarra, I was like, mm, mm, I, was, I was in the competition with them. I was there. I used to love that. Me, my husband, and my kids will watch cheer. You, you heard me? Like, I loved Navarra. And I remember they went up against this other team. It was a black guy that was the coach. And I was just like, no, I mean, I'm rooting for y'all too, but no, <laughs> I was team Navarro. Y'all would have thought I had a uniform upstairs, but to remember what happened with Jerry, where he was convicted of child PORN charges. So this is an update from Radar Online exclusive cheer star, Jerry Harris ordered to pay 136,000 in restitution to minor victims as he serves 12 year sentence. Y'all remember Jerry, Jerry was the cheery one, the motivating one, the one that you wanted to root for. And then we find out uh, different things that he had going on. Let's go ahead y'all and get into this. Sorry, I had to, to take care of this uh, notification. All right, let's go. Jerry Harris was ordered to pay a six-figure amount related to his ex crimes against children. Documents obtained by RadarOnline.com showed the disgraced cheer star 24 was slapped with a judgment of over 136000 in restitution that must be paid ASAP to five of his minor victims. As the outlet reported, Harris was sentenced to 12 years in prison in July 2022 after pleading guilty to one count of receipt of child P., and one count of traveling with the intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct. The restitution was disclosed in legal documents filed on February 8th that went undetected until now. RadarOnline.com can exclusively reveal that Harris is on the book for one on the hook for $136,348.76 due immediately, which breaks down as follows. One of his minor victims will collect $124,348.76, while the other four get $3,000 each per the order. If Harris can't pay the restitution lump sum now, 10% of his future earnings after his release will be taken from each check. Whew, RadarOnline.com has already told you the former Netflix star must also fork over $35,000 to the AVAA Crime Victims Fund. However, he's also been ordered to pay 10000 to the Justice for Victims of Trafficking Act. So he's got to pay his victims. I mean, that's the least that can be done, you know? It's not going to fix everything, but at least I feel like it's something, you know, that's being done towards it. But I just, 
I remember just being blown away, like, like, just wow. So he's getting ready to be on what June of this year will be year two of his 12 year sentence. Let's talk about Dr. Wendy, Dr. Wendy to you, sweetie, some bad news for Dr. Wendy. Real Housewife of Potomac star Wendy Osefo's home burglarized while on vacation. My family and I are devastated. Dr. Wendy Osefo, known for her role in the Real Housewives of Potomac, faced a difficult... They didn't prove root. Basically faced a difficult situation when her home in Finksburg, Maryland, was burglarized while she was vacationing with her family. The incident happened while Wendy, her husband, Eddie Osefo, and their three children were on a trip to Jamaica. The burglary was discovered upon their return from the tropical getaway, where Wendy had been actively sharing moments from their vacation at the Azul Beach Resort in the Grill. Several of the 39-year-old TV personalities' valuable items were taken, including multiple, multiple, multiple Birkin bags and jewelry. My family and I are devastated and feel violated by this intrusion. We thank God no one was home. So for that, we feel very blessed. Material things can always be replaced, she told TMZ. The Carroll County Sheriff's Office confirmed that the theft was reported to their office on Sunday, but did not provide further details as the investigation is still ongoing. I feel for Dr. Wendy. Let this also be a reminder. Do not post until you come back. Take all the videos you want there. Do all the things, but do not post until you come back. And actually, when you come back, you might want to make it known in your caption. We had a wonderful time. That way they don't think you're there and try to break in and you're actually home. Even me, and I am not a reality TV personality. My husband and I, we take pictures, do whatever, but we don't. At least I tried not to like 90 something percent of the time we not to post until we get back if we post our pictures because I don't want you just never know who's watching your page. You know, you just you don't know who knows who, who knows who, who knows who, who may actually uh, be feeling a way about you. And oh, you're not home. They know what you got. And boom, they didn't rob your house or whatever. So prayers for Dr. Wendy and her family. I hope that her insurance covers everything that was uh, stolen from her home. I know that can feel violating like my headphones and, and I'm good with my stuff. It 96% of the time I don't lose stuff, but that 4% when I do, it's devastating to me because I try to pride myself on not on knowing where my stuff is. And like when my family would use my stuff, like my kids or my husband, I'd be like, put it back where it is because I have like my routine set up. My headphones happen to leave my house I don't know how, I don't know when, back two months ago, they were my Bose headphones. I work out to them. When I'm out doing different things, I wear them out. The, I don't, cause I don't really want to have conversation. I like to be listening to my content. So they were my silver Bose headphones. And to me, I just feel like, yes, they were only $130, but that was my $130 that I spent like over a year ago on them. I kept them in good condition. I kept them, I knew where they were. And I just happened to bring them in um, to my house at night. Like if me and my husband were hanging out downstairs, but he was watching something else on TV, instead of me going to a different room to watch TV, I didn't care. I'll just be on my laptop with my headphones on. I don't know what happened. Maybe I dropped them, but I was devastated. Like for real, I'm still sending text messages to my husband, like, Hey, and he's like, we're just going to buy you another pair. And I'm like, no, because I don't like spending money on stuff that I know I had when I feel like it's not my fault that it's no longer here. I know that might not make sense. So I have these little flimsy little earbud things that I put in no noise cancellation. When I'm at the gym, I can hear every conversation. It's so annoying. But so I say that to say, I was devastated with my headphones. So I can imagine how Dr. Wendy feels knowing that somebody came in her home and was just all in her stuff. So thoughts and prayers again, go out to her, you know, that they feel peace in their home, that they're not afraid, you know, to be there and that they stop posting when they are away and letting folks know they're away. Real Housewives of Atlanta. We've got official confirmation. I guess that Kenya is back. Is that official too? Did she, I know she did the, Video twirl. So I guess, yes, it's official. 
that she's coming back. I know people kept saying, I thought that was confirmed. We knew this already. Technically, it hadn't been confirmed. Only Portia's had been confirmed, confirmed. So now Kenya is confirmed. Portia is confirmed. Um, and we don't know who is coming back. According to Radar Online, uh, producers debated doing a reboot like Bravo did with Real Housewives of New York, but decided against the full reboot. However, sources tell us that Sheree Whitfield is at risk of being cut, but it does look like Drew Sidora will be coming back for another season if all works out as planned. I would like to see Drew come back. I really would. And it was B. Scott who first reported the Kenya news. Reported producers have been working on casting uh, new women for months. So I know they need to come on. Atlanta, please don't let me down. Like Atlanta has always been my heart. Like don't let... Don't let me down. Are you guys excited or even still interested in the casting of Atlanta? Or, or has it kind of went to the back of your mind? Like, if it comes back, it comes back. If it doesn't, it doesn't. How are y'all feeling about Atlanta? I'm just sad that I feel like we won't get it until the end of the year, if at all. this year. I'm, It would have to come out in 2024, right? They're not going to do a whole year, you think? Like Dubai did. Are y'all excited about Dubai? They showed the first episode in BravoCon. I think I just remember them sitting by the pool. I don't remember what else happened. I remember thinking they looked beautiful and wow, this might be good. But I was thinking this might be good because it looked so beautiful. But I don't remember what happened in the episode. And I actually did leave in the middle of it for a few minutes to go into one of the rooms. And then I came back and watched the rest of it and don't know what happened. So there's that. But are y'all excited about Dubai? Are y'all excited about Jersey coming? Jersey's coming next month. We already know it's a divided cast. Andy said they cannot go on like this. So I do wonder, and I think I said this before, if Jersey and Teresa are going to get the same smoke that Potomac got about the cast being divided. We shall see. All right, y'all. I will talk to y'all later. I'm about to get out in these streets and make this money after all. I need new headphones. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.